I think your internet connection is low. I I hear like you are like a, a monster. Your uh, your voice is like a monster. <laughs> that noise is like I can't hear you anything. I think teacher uh, Michael should uh, lock out and is uh, and uh, uh, and go to the link of the class Google camp again. You can use my phone to see. Okay. Ask them if you can please. Um, I'm just in with Miss Duck now. Can you guys hear this any better? Yes. Kevin, can I get you to try and say something? Blah, 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 blah. Device. Uh, that sounded better for a second. No, I'm doing it on my device too. Kevin's doing the same thing with me. Okay. okay. Now, can you go to your room? You hear me better? Yeah, uh, I'll I'll see. So, yeah, it's still Kevin that I can't hear. Kevin, can you change the device? Because maybe is your device have a problem? Uh, no, Kevin? I didn't teach anything the last time. Yeah, but can you hear me now? Can you hear me clear? Uh, yeah, I can. Do you hear me clear? Yeah, so if I'm using hear. my my device, you can clear me here. I right, then can you? Uh, 
corn and hear me clear, yeah? Then that means the, the sound is not a problem because my device is not a problem, right? So Conan, can you say something? Conan? Yeah. Or Ken? Yeah? Conan, a... you hear me clear? Yes. Hello? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You hear me clear? I hear you okay, right? Michael? Yes, I hear you okay too. Okay, Michael? Michael? All right, so Kevin. All right, let, let's stop talking. All right. Okay. I think it's, yes. It's, what, what is the sound? Is it from Michael's sound? Is it, is it from Michael's sound problem? Michael? I think the sound problem is from Michael's computer. Yeah? Wait a minute. I may be able to. All right. He can use Michael. I, I get him the, the, another device. Michael? I can't hear you. That is the problem from your, your device, Michael. So maybe you, can you turn on? You have two device. Is another, is another one have? Okay, you can start talking now using this phone, okay. Right, so, and then I see if I get you another device, All right? Yes. No worries. Okay, so this is, so yes. this is going to be an interesting way of running the lesson. I'm going to try and speak to you through Miss Duke's microphone. Hopefully that makes it. So I think something comes in with your... Yeah, so, okay, so I've just logged back in. Ke Kevin, can I get you to try and say something into the microphone? Blah, 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 blah. It's not okay. Done the topic. Okay, that's cool. All right, so um, I'm just going to use the audio from Mr. Duke's phone for this. Problem solver. Problem solver. So you have to turn off one. Yeah, I've turned off my audio. I'm just running through your phone. Okay, sorry about that. So last week, or last lesson, sorry, on Monday, we were learning about persuasive sentences. So these are little sentences that we use in our persuasive writing uh, when we only want to just write one line. We don't want to write a full paragraph. And <laughs> so I just want someone to tell me who can remember the two, the two parts, the two necessary parts of a persuasive sentence. Who can find me the two part, the two necessary parts of a persuasive sentence? No, the evidence is important, but for a different part of the writing. So for a persuasive sentence, the two things we want, a hook, black it. So the two things we want are a clear point of view, and we want to use one of, or at least one of our persuasive techniques that hopefully we've been uh, practicing 
with our homework. Now I had a quick look at some of Ken's homework that he sent in. Very good. Give you some good know words why here. Why only me doing homework? Pardon? I don't know why only me doing homework. Well, the plus side for you on that, Kev, uh, Ken, is I, I don't know either, but at least you'll be the one person in the class that really masters these techniques if you're the one doing the homework. Very good. Reasons are a type of evidence. So um, I saw uh, I saw Ken's homework and I'm very happy with how his persuasive sentences are coming along. And occasionally, occasionally when we need it, we will also include a call to action. So we will tell our reader to do something with a persuasive sentence. So the topic of today's class will be writing persuasive paragraphs. So to any of you that, I think it's just Kevin, but to any of you that do my, do a debating class with me, this is actually very similar to, or it's almost identical to the teal paragraph structure. So you'd be looking for your topic sentence, your explanation, your evidence and your linking sentence. But when we talk about it in terms of persuasive, uh, persuasive writing, Just saw a message. Yes, the point, that is the, the point of view. So to write a persuasive paragraph, we need to look at it like this. We need to start with a clear topic sentence. Or if we are to uh, use the same words that we've been using for persuasive writing. We're looking for a clear point of view. So what is the point of view that we are trying to get across with this paragraph? The next thing we'll need is supporting sentences. And a supporting sentence, a supporting sentences are designed to add more detail to your argument. So what we would be looking for there, for example, if I was talking about uh, school uniforms should be mandatory. So if my clear topic sentence is, I think school uniforms should be mandatory because when everybody wears the same uniform, nobody can be singled out based on what they're wearing. So that would be my topic sentence. You understand my position on the issue and you understand what I am proposing or a reason that it, that it is like that. So then my supporting sentences, I would go on to add in more detail about how Sometimes people can get bullied if they wear different clothes and that um, in order to try and eliminate that at schools, uh, everybody wears the same outfit so nobody can be singled out. So it's just adding more detail. Next, this is where I think Kevin sent the message in. We want to provide evidence. We want to provide information from other people or other sources that support our argument or that support our point of view. And finally, 
we will be looking for a concluding sentence. And the point of the concluding sentence is just to tie your arguments together. So it's just a reminder about your stance on the view, or sorry, your stance on the issue. And very good, Conan, it's a conclusion. So yeah, it just ties your, yeah, linking back. It ties your argument and your evidence together and just one sentence that reminds the reader what point you're making. Very good. So, the next thing I would like to do is try to show you uh, some examples of persuasive paragraphs. So, Let me find one of the articles I was looking at earlier. I really need to learn not to close these tabs off. Leave them open for class. Okay, so very good, Conan. So I've got this article here, should all cars be electric? So this is an opinion piece. Uh, and it's also, it's a, a debate-based article. So they'll have points of view for affirmative and points of view for negative that disagree. So let's have a look at some of these paragraphs. So let's have a look at Princia, what she says. So in my opinion, we should all have electric cars. So that is her clear point of view. That's her topic sentence. And then she goes on to provide uh, reasons. So our gas car burn, our gas cars burn fossil fuels, which are limited resources. These fuels cannot be regenerated and using them is unsustainable. So that is our reason. That's why she thinks that we should have uh, electric cars. But the electricity powering EVs can be generated from renewable energy sources. These include solar and wind, uh, solar and wind power. Think about it. Transportation causes 21% of global carbon dioxide emissions. That's a huge factor in climate change. Driving EVs could eliminate that. So if we have a look here, we've got some more reasons. We've got an, uh, another couple of, actually, I stand corrected. So there's her second reason. And then we go on to talk about evidence. So this is, these are the facts that she's producing to prove her argument. So we have some examples here for our evidence. We've got examples of other types of energy that could be used. And then we go on to list a statistic here. Hello, Rika. Welcome. Glad you could make it. So I can give you the laptop. Sure. Then I just take the phone because.
Okay, so we're doing a bit okay, of a so swap over here. So I'm going to run the class on my my tablet. I'm going to speak to you guys through a laptop. And I've also got my phone here to yeah. Okay, so can everybody hear me? Just to double check, can everybody hear me still? Yes. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. Okay, so we're into our evidence now. We see the examples here. And then we have a statistic. Transportation causes 21% of global carbon dioxide emissions. So we've got although can anybody point out one thing that she forgot to do? One thing that I've been telling you guys to do with your evidence that Princia hasn't. She didn't provide the source of her information. So truthfully speaking, I, I, would, I, I would believe that. Um, I would give her the benefit of the doubt and say that I don't think she'd make up a statistic like that, but she hasn't given us the source of her information. She's then gone on to say that's a huge factor in climate change. Driving EVs could eliminate that. The switch needs to happen soon, not only to protect the environment, but so we kids can have a brighter and cleaner future. So we also, so here, we also don't have, what are you guys talking about? I hope you have fun on your vacation, Conan. Hope you enjoy yourself. So here, we don't actually have a, well, actually, we do have a, a, a linking sentence of sorts. So it kind of happens over two or three smaller sentences. So driving EVs could eliminate that. Abbreviation for thank you. The switch needs to happen soon, not only to protect the environment, but so we kids can have a brighter and cleaner future. So we've kind of got our, our conclusion here. Okay, so let's have a look at another. We'll do one more. So this one is a negative response from Kieran. So let's have a look here. We've got our, hopefully we've got a good topic sentence to get started. Electric vehicles pollute the planet just as much as, if not more than gas cars. So we've got a very, there's no doubt about where he stands on this issue. So that's a good, a good topic sentence. Think of when you're charging an EV. That power is coming from a power plant, which burns fossil fuels and pollutes the planet. More electric cars just means more charging, but we'd need to build more power plants. So here, this is his explanation. Or this is where he's expanding on his point of view. The explanation here is our topic sentence. So we've got some evidence here. And mining for the elements needed to build EV batteries creates a ton of pollution. If automakers produce all electric cars, they'll mine for the elements more often. So he's given us a good example here about why uh, for his evidence. 
he's given us a good example uh, as to why electric vehicles are polluting the planet. The switch to EVs could destroy the planet. A lot of things are like this. It's not always black and white. Both electric and gasoline cars hurt the planet. And so again, his summary, his conclusion has happened over two or three smaller sentences. The switch to EVs could destroy the planet. So it's definitely no to EVs. A lot of things are like this. It's not always black and white. Very true. Both electric and gasoline cars hurt the planet. So we see there, of, uh, with those two examples so far, we see there quite a different, uh, quite a different, what do you call it? A, a couple of different ways to write these uh, persuasive paragraphs. So what I would like to do now, uh, so actually before we, before I say that, uh, do you guys uh, understand the structure that we've been talking about, or would you like to go through a th third example before we, uh, before I give you a task to do? Terrific. Do the task. Done. Terrific. Yes, do the side mission. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you a topic and I want you guys to write, I want you guys to write a persuasive paragraph about the topic. It will not be mission impossible. You guys can do this. Okay. You just have a rest. Do you need to go? Anything? One more to go? Or maybe not? Oh, we just signed. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We just had Macca's. <laughs> Good night. Good night, guys. How are you? Good night. Oh, swan away from Mildura. <laughs> Mildura. I'm quite new to Victoria. Where's that based? Northwest. Oh, yeah. Quite, 600K. <laughs> quite a distance you've traveled. Up the stairs. Uh, yeah, if that if that's where Dorothy's gone, just follow her. Yeah, no, you're here a little bit early, Crystal. <laughs> Crystal's a student in my next class. Because I run all the classes out of the same room, uh, we tend to get a few students coming in early. So uh, uh, that's uh, an, another guest at Miss Duke's house. So what are the four things that we need in a persuasive paragraph? Who wants to remind me? Four things we need. I'll give you the first one. So we need a clear point of view or topic sentence. What's the next thing that we need? What's the next thing that we need? We need our explanation or our reasons why. Number three, we need to provide. Evidence. We do not need herd mentality, Kevin. Goodness. Okay, so just to remind you guys about some of the types Reason. of evidence. So we've got facts, statistics, expert opinions. 
anecdotes or personal stories. Very good. We've also got examples. Can anyone else think of any other types of evidence? So we've got facts, statistics, expert opinions, anecdotes or personal stories, and examples. And finally, we need our conclusion or our linking sentence. Very good. So we have our four parts of the we have our four parts of the persuasive paragraph here. And as well, I just want to give you guys a list of the persuasive techniques that you can use. So one, we have alliteration. Two, we have connotation. We have emotive language and power words. We learned about those recently. We have evidence. So that can be a very important persuasive technique. So, and you, as you can see, that's part of the structure of the paragraph. But exaggeration, powerful word. Yes, Conan, very good. We've got imagery. We've got metaphor. This will all get posted on the board in a minute. Not expensive words. Words are free. We've got repetition. We've got rhetorical questions. And we have tone. So we've got all of these persuasive techniques that we can use in our paragraph. So, and Kevin, you should be an absolute expert at this by now because I've seen some of the paragraphs you've sent in in the debate class. So you should actually find this bit super easy to do. And one of the things, or one of the things, so what I'm gonna get you to do now is I'm going to give you all, if there's time, we'll do two. But if not, we'll do one. But I'm going to give you guys a topic and I want you guys to write me a persuasive paragraph about the topic. Okay, so your example uh, your topic that I want you to write a paragraph about is should students be allowed to have pets in the classroom? Yep, 10 minutes for a paragraph should be enough. So. All right, so I'll add that topic to the board here. What is the topic?
Okay. So I'll put our topic up there. You can pick. Um, so your topic is either students should be allowed to have pets in the classroom if you think that they should be allowed to bring pets to school. And if you don't think students should be allowed to bring pets to school, then that's your topic. So you've got 10 minutes now to write a paragraph. So think of your point of view. Think of your explanation, think of the reasons why. And yeah, provide me some good evidence. Uh, it can be any of the different types you see uh, on, the, on the whiteboard there. And then uh, try and use some of these persuasive techniques as well. So 10 minutes starts now. Start writing. Um, if you need any help or if you have any questions, uh, please send me a message in the chat box and I'll be happy to answer for you. So 10 minutes starts now at 2.52, according to my clock. At 2.52, uh, we're going to stop. We're going to have a look at a couple of our paragraphs. So go for gold. And as you finish typing your paragraph, just post it in the chat box so I can have a read of it, please.
All right, just checking in, guys. How's everybody going? Does anybody need any help with their paragraph? Okay, so has anyone finished their paragraph yet? If so, send it in in the chat box, please. I'd like to start reading them. Thank you, Conan. Good job, Conan. Um, you've really painted a you've really painted a very clear picture for me as to why we shouldn't be allowed to have pets in the classroom. Um, we could probably tidy the grammar up a little bit, but the actual content you've sent me is very good. I like some of the expressive words you've used. Like uh, when you talk about the dog uh, launching itself at, at your friend, I like that imagery that you've created there. So yeah, overall, very good job, Conan. Well done. Who else has a, a paragraph that they're ready to send in? Because we all should be just about ready to 
finish our paragraph at this point. <laughs> you. Okay. So as soon as the clock turns to 2.52, time is up and I want everybody to start sending in their paragraphs, please. So far, Conan's paragraph was really, really good. All right, time up, guys. I want you to send me what you've got. Doesn't matter how much you've written. I just want you to send me what you've got. Kevin, let's see yours, please. So Kevin and Ken, yeah, I'd like to see your paragraphs, please. Whatever you've written, just send it on in. I want to have a read. Thank you, Kevin. I'll have a read of that now. In my opinion, I think that pets should be allowed in classrooms. I think that pets should be allowed in classrooms because children need their freedom, right? Children are people like us. They are living things. They need their freedom. Everyone needs their freedom, even animals. Okay. So couple of things here so there you've given us a reason uh, of pets should be allowed in classrooms because children need their freedom so I like your reasoning there but the evidence I don't see any evidence I see a topic sentence I think uh, I see your explanation Right, Thank you for yours, Ken. Okay, yeah, so to sum these up, uh, Kevin, oh, so you said you've just finished your evidence. Can you send that in to me, please? My evidence. Um, when you said the time is up, I'm I've just finished my evidence. Uh, my uh my topic sentence, my explanation, and my evidence. Okay, so what? So this? So what you've sent is what you had done. Of course. Okay. So, all right here. So, uh, for your topic sentence. First thing, I would, I would actually remove the words in my opinion uh, because that immediately uh, sends it to a, this is my opinion, this is what I think. And we want to try and be more giving with our persuasive writing. So try and make it about the people who will read the writing. Crystal, you're not the teacher. Please don't provide feedback. But yeah, so take out the in my opinion. The I think the pets should be allowed in classrooms. Great start. I think the pets should be allowed in the classroom because children need their freedom. So we've provided uh, a reason there, but we need to expand on that a bit more. What freedoms... Do you think, uh, Crystal is a student in my class coming up next. But yeah, so here we have, um, so I think that pets should be allowed in classrooms because children need their freedom, right? It's a good, it's a good reason to provide, but we need more about it. So what freedoms do you think will be being taken away by not being allowed to have children in, uh, by not being allowed to have pets in a classroom? So we need a bit more detail in your reason and your explanation. 
And children are people like us. They are living things. They need their freedom. Everyone needs their freedom, even animals. That is, that's just very mishmashy, just throwing words together. Like I've read, I've, I've read your writing and I know that you are capable of uh, thinking of a thinking of a better sentence than that to finish your paragraph. But good good structure. We just need to expand on our reasons and our evidence a bit more. Ken. Uh, Conan, if you need to, uh, you're welcome to leave. I'll post the homework in the group, uh, in the Zalo group from this. So Ken, students shouldn't have pets at school because firstly, pets sometimes have a virus. It is very dangerous because it can kill a lot of people. Okay, so you have gone quite sensational uh, with that bit of writing there. So you've just gone, you've just said, uh, firstly, pets can sometimes have a virus. So pet, pets can be sick, that's true. Uh, and then it is very dangerous because it can kill a lot of people. We've gone straight to that absolute worst case catastrophe. So um, with this, so with this paragraph, first of all, uh, you have stated your point of view and you have given a reason, but you definitely need to expand that reason a bit more. You need to give us more detail. Um, like for example, why that reason is strong enough to keep pets out of classrooms. Uh, it is very dangerous because it can kill a lot of people. Good example. But for an argument like that, I'd say you would probably need statistics or more, more credible evidence to make an argument like that because it is quite, uh, it is quite uh, sensational, like I say. Okay, so good work, everybody. We had a small class today, but we got through it. We did well. I'll post your homework in the Zalo group now. And other than that, I'll see you guys on Friday. You're all excused. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Bye, Kevin. Teacher. Thanks, Ken. Thank you, guys. Well done. Okay, hello to my next class. Uh, I am just going to take a couple of minutes now to put that last class's homework in the Zalo group, and then we will get started. Teacher, why didn't you turn on the camera in the last class? Oh, I did. Check, check, check this out. Sometimes when I go into the chat box, my class will, my class, when I go into the chat box, my, uh, my camera sometimes for some reason flips sideways and you can't see me. And it just gets really frustrating to have to flip my tablet every 10 minutes. All right, so I'll see you guys in a couple of minutes. I just wanna do this homework for them and then we'll get started.